ready to go from Gateway, the first level of the 2021 season. Malukas has the jump, Kirkwood behind him. The two teammates trying to go side by side for third. And it's really tight, three wide with Toby Sowery on the top. You don't often get away with that except for the first lap. Hopefully they don't do that for many more laps to come. Still side by side, back there for third. Peterson and Lundquist trying to sort it out. And up front, around the outside, a battle for the lead. Kirkwood is trying to get Malukas. Meanwhile, Lundquist is on the top side of Peterson. They are still together. Malukas hung on to the lead. Kirkwood has a draft, going to pop out early, try to go the long way around one more time. Malukas hangs on to the spot, and Kirkwood is sliding, but hangs on to it. Linus Lundquist looking to take advantage of that momentum. Kyle Kirkwood's got to get that out of his head, get rolling again. Linus Lundquist doing everything he can to put himself back in the championship battle. Side by side a little further back with Sowry and Peroni. That is for sixth. Robert McGinnis popping out on Benjamin Peterson. Trying to go the long way around. He already had a moment. Devlin DeFrancesco way up high in two as well. That bright yellow car, DeFrancesco won from pole last year at Indy Pro 2000. Now they will start to sort out just a little bit. DeFrancesco popping again on Peroni. Still gathering up his confidence on the oval. Peroni, his first oval race. Peroni goes down low to defend. DeFrancesco on the high side. Trying to grab seventh place, and he will get it done. Thanks for joining us at Worldwide Technology Raceway today. Madison, Illinois, across the Mississippi River from St. Louis for the Cooper Tires Indy Lights Oval Challenge. Kevin Lee, Charlie Kimball, Katie Kyle, the first of a doubleheader weekend for Indy Lights presented by Cooper Tires. IndyCar is coming up tomorrow with a one-day show culminating 8 o'clock Eastern time, 7 o'clock local tomorrow night on NBC. SN with the Bomberito Automotive Group 500 tomorrow night, always entertaining on the oval. In this event, David Malukas started on pole, was challenged early by Kyle Kirkwood as Toby Sowery is off and in the grass. This is going to be the chance for Kyle Kirkwood. He, he lost the spot on the first start trying to go for the lead. This is going to be the opportunity for second and third to get up the win. Kirkwood was fortunate to keep it off the wall. Good start there on board with Benjamin Peterson as they go green up front. Kirkwood looking around the outside, trying to get by Lundquist for second. They're side by side for second. Malukas, meanwhile, likes to fight behind him. He'll try to scoot away for the lead. Kyle Kirkwood into oh. the wall. Just brushed the wall at the exit of two there. Oh man, Linus Lundquist, that was a defense, maybe some contact. I thought Lundquist was a little bit squirrely, like something was going on with the abrupt nature that he moved. Further back, McGinnis and DeFrancesco, teammates. DeFrancesco, bright yellow car, gets that position for the moment, that's fifth. McGinnis looking back to the inside, can't find it there. Everyone knows that when it settles down, it's so much harder to pass. And so they're trying to bring the aggression on this restart, running two wide, sometimes three wide, looking for clean air as we get a shot of Kirkwood almost to the wall at the exit of two. That's as close to the wall as you can get without contact. Here it is again. And I don't think he hit it. He's still gaining a little bit on Robert McGinnis. And the challenge here at Gateway is the two ends of the racetrack are so different. You really want to set the pass up coming out of four to get to the inside, steal the bottom going into turn one, which means you have to set it up the lap before going into turn one. So as you roll through one and two here, Alex needs to be on the throttle a little sooner than Robert McGinnis, carry that momentum out of two, now the challenge is staying in the throttle through three and four. Ideally, they're full throttle the whole way through three and four. And if Alex can continue to draft up, not have the car slide on him, not have to lift, the opportunity then comes drafting down the front straight, popping to the inside into one. But you have to make that decision early because if you go too late and have to back out, you lose all the momentum and Daniel Frost is right there to pounce. Peroni is thinking about McGinnis right now. We've got a battle for position for six. Alex Peroni down on the low side, and it may be a problem for McGinnis. He is slowing. Frost goes by him, so an issue for Robert McGinnis. We've seen a couple of mechanical issues so far today. 
Robert McGinnis bringing that car to the low side on the front straight. It does look like he has some sort of an issue, maybe on that right front, trying to get it back to pit lane as safely as possible. The leaders are just coming into turn one now. Hopefully he'll be able to get out of the way and not affect the race lead, not cause a yellow either. And it was a thrash by the Andretti Autosport team to get him prepared after he had a big slide and made contact with the wall as the leader, David Malukas, goes by. Christian Bogle putting him another lap down at this point. And McGinnis will make it to pit lane. But that essentially takes him out of contention. The challenge with the short track like it is here at Gateway is a little problem like this puts you laps down as we see a replay. Oh, and because Alex Peroni is going by him on the inside, he can't get to the bottom and get to pit lane. Yeah. You know he was thinking, how do I get to the bottom? How do I get into pit lane? How do I get the car fixed? We see the right front. And we have a yellow. And Linus Lundquist, one of the championship contenders, running second in this race, is in the wall. And that is going to move Kirkwood up and impact the overall championship standings. With that right front. You can see the rubber delaminating off that tire. He, he saves it a little bit, and then, oh, even as he's on his way up to the wall, you can see it pulls that front wing off the nose of the car. And we, because of time constraints, are going to unfortunately see this one finish under caution, we are being told. And you see the white flag. Camping World Truck Series with NASCAR is coming up tonight with a television window. So unfortunately, that's where things are going to end. The most important thing today, you held off Kyle Kirkwood. How did you do it? I'm dizzy. <laughs> um, well, man, I mean, it was tight on the start. I had an amazing spotter. Thank you, Luke Varley. I mean, the, the information he gave me on those first couple laps was spot on. It was top class. I mean, I felt like I was in an in IndyCar. I felt so professional. I was just, I couldn't believe it in the car. I was starstruck. Uh, thank you to the whole team. Man, those first laps, it was intense, but I saw he had a bit, of a, a bit of a wobble, and we got that lead, and I just kept my head down. I didn't look back. I trusted my spotter. I trusted my, my team, and I just put the head forward, and, and we went. Green at Gateway, Worldwide Technology Raceway. Second half of the doubleheader in 70 laps, and there will be a break midway through. We'll address it in a moment. Let's watch the racing as they sort out here at the beginning. There was so much action off the starts and restarts yesterday. These drivers know it's the best opportunity to move up. Kyle Kirkwood holding that lead through one and two. Side by side with Daniel Frost, looks like Alex. Uh, Linus Lundquist in that 26 car on the outside coming through four. Yeah, it's a different look for Linus Lundquist. It's uh, not his traditional livery. It's the one that Washington has been running. So it's all dark today. So the Peterson and Lundquist cars do not look at all alike. A little further back, Toby Sowery, green and white car. He's down on the low side, Alex Peroni. You see him a little bit behind in one of the blue cars with green tint up in front, blue and white. That's the Andretti Steinbrenner car of Robert McGinnis. And McGinnis moved forward very quickly. Remember, he started in the back. It was a great start for Robert McGinnis. He knew that that mistake in qualifying was going to hurt him in the start of race two, but he had a good run yesterday, had a mechanical issue and a problem that didn't get him the result. He knew today he needed to take advantage of that start. Guinness is already up to seventh in front of Sowery, in front of Peroni, who had his first oval race yesterday and did well. Daniel Frost slips a few spots. Kirkwood, Malukas, Peterson, and Lundquist. For more on the story today and this weekend, let's check in with Katie Kyle. Well, Kevin, you kind of hinted at it before today's green flag. A right front tire issue plagued about half the field yesterday, so the series decided to make some changes. Here's how it'll shake out today. Uh, drivers will pit on lap 35, and we have also reduced the length of the race down to 70 laps from 75 laps. When they come in at lap 35, they will change both right side tires and fill the car up with fuel. So remember that any lights don't normally make pit stops, so they're kind of doing a mock pit stop with that red flag today. Drivers and teams will not be allowed to make any other adjustments on the cars. This is all being done out of an abundance of caution from what we saw yesterday when those right front tires were just doing something a little funky. Cooper Tires is still 
working to figure out exactly what happened to those right front tires. So, Charlie, now instead of a long 70-lap race, we basically have two 35-lap shootouts. As a driver, how does that change what you're doing all race long? Well, the mindset for these drivers, they know they're going to get a single-file restart halfway through. So the keys to, to this race, it's going to be about the starts and restarts. We saw so much action at the start of the race. They know they're getting a restart on lap 36. They, as drivers, I know I would be thinking about what I'm going to do differently on that restart to be able to go out and get the spot. Maybe it's the spot for the win or a podium. The interesting thing about Gateway here in this racetrack is both ends of the racetrack are so very different. Turn one and two, look as we drop in here, how tight it feels and how big the banking is, the load in the car. So we see Alex Peroni trying to go by Toby Sowery. I think he might actually get it done, steal the bottom into one and two. It's a tighter, it's a big downshift into this corner. Toby's gonna try and hang on around the outside. Oh, well, well done. He's been working that move for six or eight laps. It's ready to go green again at Gateway Worldwide Technology Raceway across the Mississippi River. It's Kyle Kirkwood, David Malukas, Benjamin Peterson. They're on one, two, three. They got a good jump. Malukas looking for a way around. Kirkwood has a good restart. He's going to hang on to the lead, and he's going to spread it out just a little bit. They're spreading out in the back, racing each other. Robert McGinnis working through lap traffic. Alex Peroni trying to follow him through. We'll see how Robert McGinnis gets through turns three and four. Is McGinnis, McGinnis going by? Oh, that's Linus Lundquist racing Daniel Frost a little further back, sorry. Extra dark colored car, that's fourth in line right there, the 26 of Linus Lundquist, Daniel Frost, low side, red and white car. Teammate Dan Devlin DeFrancesco in that bright yellow car, Frost has the advantage. Malukwis lunges in front. Kirkwood has the low line, though. They stay glued together through three and four. Back on the main straightaway. A drag race for the lead. They almost touch. Malukas is just a few feet in front. David Malukas has taken the lead. Can he hang on to it? Kirkwood won't give it up. Still on the low line. Battling side by side here outside St. Louis. David Malukas doing a great job hanging around, around the outside. I didn't think you could go too wide through three, and I think he's Almost gonna clear him, he doesn't. He's gonna have to do it again. Kirkwood comes back, he has the low line. Still side by side. It is the long way around on the outside. David Malukas, no one's told him he shouldn't be able to do that. He's really, really hanging on here. This battle might go a long way towards deciding the championship. Top two fighting for the scholarship money. David Maluka still trying to clear Kyle Kirkwood and he got him. Malukas to the lead, trying to sweep the weekend. What a great move. David Malukas was working on that before the break. Such great momentum. Kyle Kirkwood's lost his momentum. We'll see if Benjamin Peterson follows his teammate through. Could it be a championship move for David Malukas? He's taken over the lead at Worldwide Technology Raceway. There looked like there is a line of rubber around the outside. Outside rear, I think, maybe right rear of Robert McGinnis, and that's really going to take some grip away. And Alex Peroni gets the pass done going into turn three. I wonder if they're having issues with the balance of the car, right front here, right rears. That's for sixth position. McGinnis, though, is coming back, trying to go around the outside. McGinnis and Peroni. Peroni will hang on to it. It's really good. Yellow, yellow. And I wonder, there is debris on the track. So caution here with 13 laps to go. So we're seeing the white flag. This one is going to end, and that's why you're seeing the celebration for the HMD and Global Racing Group teams. They're gonna have a pair of podiums and David Malukas is gonna sweep the weekend. The team told me you were quiet and I just cannot believe that. Oh man, I, I knew when we when we had the restart, I, I don't know if anybody knew, but in that first bit, I had no radio. I was freaking out. I was looking at my mirrors. I was like, I don't know if he's going inside, outside. And so I kind of just, because I knew we were going to have to do the caution. So I was like, I'm just going to wait this first half. I know I have the pace. I learned from his line. I knew he went down low, up high. And we came in, we boxed, we put the fresh tires on, and I, I was just focused. I knew we were going to get it. Watch the Grand Prix of Portland, Sunday, September 12th at 3 p.m. on NBC.